we have reared the desert locust here at Isipe since 1991. Uh, this is a colony that was uh, initiated with a stop from the Desert Locust Control Organization in Ethiopia. And we've been doing this in a safe way without allowing the locusts to, to be released to the environment. And we've used these locusts for different research meant to develop techniques for its management, notably the biological control techniques and pheromone traps. And recently, ECP established the Insects for Food, Feed and Other Uses program in which we have analyzed the desert locusts and found that it's highly nutritious. It's one of the most highly nutritious insects, high in protein, high in fat, high in vitamins, and also high in uh, uh, minerals, which are very good for fighting malnutrition, as well as being used as alternatives for protein sources in animal feed. Desert locusts are a species of grasshopper, but unlike other common grasshoppers, they can transform and change from uh, solitary to gregarious phase. And now this, the, the gregarious phase now is the one that is responsible for the swarm. Um, in their life cycle, they undergo in complete metamorphosis, whereby uh, they, they have uh, the herdots, the hag, and the nymph. The herdots will lay their eggs in moist, sandy soil uh, around 10 to 15 centimeters deep, and then after laying the, the, the egg, the female is going to cover the egg uh, with the froth. This froth now is going to protect the egg, it, and also when the nymphs arch, it, it will be the, the pathway where they will come out from the ground. So the eggs will take about uh, two to three weeks to hatch into small green uh, hoppers. These green hoppers now are the first instars, and the nymphs, they are allowed five instars. So, and from each insta to the next, it, it takes about um, five to seven days. And in every insta, there's molting, and there's also increase in size, and even uh, the appearance of the, the hoppers. After the fifth insta, it's now going to molt again. And this time now, it will not be a nymph, it will be an adult, but this time an immature adult, the pink one. So uh, the, the immature adults will take about um, two to three weeks before it can turn to the mature adult. And now this mature adult will take uh, around four to seven days, and then they will start mating and raise the eggs, and the cycle continues. So this is an adult cage. So inside there are males and females of uh, Schistoseca gregaria. Schistoseca gregaria is the scientific name of the desert locust. So you, you must find them that they are in pairs, male and a female. Uh, so after mating, they are going to raise their eggs on moist sad. These tubes contain sad. Uh, the sad is moist. So after mating, the female will uh, dig deep down here and lay its egg. You, you will find that most of the time you find the eggs from this point to down here and on top it's the froth that will be covering now the, the, the eggs. Uh, how to differentiate between the, the male and the female? You find that uh, for the female, they are a bit bigger compared to the males. They are, if you look at the tip of the abdomen, it's a bit pointed and for the, the one for, for the male, it's round and even the size, but the size uh, cannot give you uh, distinct uh, features because if there is enough food, sometimes even the male can be bigger than the female. So it's best if you differentiate it using the tip of the abdomen. So now this is how we correct the eggs after the females have raised them. You just uh, exchange now the tubes. In this other tube, there is another uh, moist sad so that they will continue laying because uh, they, it can lay up to three times and since in this cage there are so many females so we are going to correct eggs more than three times. So now after you've gotten your eggs you incubate them for about two to three weeks and this is how the eggs looks like. They are always in egg pods 
the egg pod can be between two to six centimeters and um, it's always with, uh, covered with the froth to protect it. While we also look at the focus on the desert locus, which has impacted us heavily in the last uh, one to two years in East Africa, there are several other species of uh, locusts world over. Some are restricted to other places like uh, South America, others to Asia and others to Europe. And others move across continents like the desert locust, which recently uh, migrated from uh, Asia through the Horn of Africa and here into East Africa. So the species are many and also the uh, the one that attacks us, the desert locust sister, Saka gregaria, is the most notorious desert locust world over. And this locust has popularly been controlled through the use of insecticide sprays, including especially using aeroplanes to spread or to, to spray wild, uh, huge chunks of uh, land, and these pesticides become a problem. To the environment. Mostly it is not uh, assessed because uh, the focus is on fighting the damage caused by desert locusts. So, but also on the other hand, in 65 countries world over where locusts exist, people have traditionally eaten locusts from biblical times and also used them to feed livestock. So when, because of that realization, our focus now has gone into developing techniques which can be used for trapping locusts massively. I think recently there was uh, an enterprise in Kenya, I think called the, the Bug Picture, which mobilized communities to collect locusts and they made a mark that these things can be collected and then they can be transformed into useful products. So as we focus on controlling locusts using pesticide sprays, we should consider critically the idea of also collecting locusts for useful applications. And that way, once, we, uh, once the technique can reduce the populations of locusts drastically, then we minimize spraying and the locusts become safe for consumption and use as animal feed. Thank you very much.